I do with Mary? Your turn with Mary? Yeah. No, oh, my turn. My girlfriend Mary. Mary, you ready for the dance? Okay, you ready for the dance? That's what I told My turn is not with Mary. I hang on to When I was growing up, my parents used to dance with, they used to ballroom dance, and uh, we were three girls, three daughters, so they would get us all up and dance with each one of us, and that's this memory that I have. And their dance teacher was somebody named Basil Valvasori, who happens to be the great uncle of Jesse Valvasori, who is my dance teacher. And um, so when I started taking lessons with Jesse, it was a bit intentional because I wanted to create a legacy and connection to my parents after they died. And um, so I was dancing with Jesse and really enjoying getting so much out of it for myself. And then um, I also was working with people at end of life and kind of getting close to end of life. It's part of the work that I do. And um, some of the clients that we had knew that I ballroom danced, and they asked, they, they were talking about their stories of how they used to dance, like Joe. And um, we thought, what a great idea. I wonder if Jesse would also work with them. And so that's how the story kind of got birthed. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell me how you got involved in this program. We got involved through Lori, who's one of Jesse's students. One day she just had the idea and, and asked Jesse if he would be willing to go teach um, and dance with uh, these people. And I overheard, so I'm like, please can I come? Let me come. And that's how I got involved. What made you want to get involved in it? I, I really like elder people. I, it's, it's one of the groups that really move me. So every time I try to find activities to volunteer or do something, my first choice is always elder people. And since um, I'm not really originally from Canada, but since moving here, I had tried to look into it a bit more and I had never had a concrete opportunity. So that seemed perfect. What was your reaction when you were asked to be involved in this? I thought it would be fun and interesting to try it out. I thought that it would be something different that I'm not used to. So I explored it and I ended up really liking it. So you've never worked with this demographic before? Not that often. Like, could I say the oldest person that I had at my studio was 83 and it was super rare. So I have to figure out what their ability is and if they're able to walk backwards easily or forwards or if they feel the rhythm or if they don't. It, it, it's, it's unique to each person. Joe, how has dance been a part of your life? Well, my wife was a ballroom dancer with her brother. They won a championship in England. I believe it was the Richardson Cup back in 1956. And I married her in 54. And before I married her, she made me learn to dance. And I'm very happy she did because we danced ever since and had a great life. One of my nieces lives here in Dundas and she knows Lori. And she told Lori about me, if I'd come out on Tuesdays to do a little workout with them, and I says, no problem. 
And I've been coming ever since I missed one day. Lori was going to give me a heck. <laughs> but not really. But I enjoy dancing with the girls and it's very good. I understand you have a very active lifestyle. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do when you're not dancing? Well, the first thing in the morning I do a day, an exercise in bed because I, I broke my hip. So I keep that working. Then I get up, go down cellar and row for half an hour. Then I go have my breakfast. And then dress and go and swim half a mile at least every day and then come back and have dinner and then row in the afternoon again so I do about all close to two hours workout every day just to keep me in shape at 91 I'm not bad. <laughs> Why do you think it's so important to stay so active? I think I've got a, a good family they look after me and I look after them in a way too that they can see that I take care of myself and I don't, I'm glad I don't need anybody to help me yet and I hope it never happens, but it's, you just feel so much better. I can get out and I can drive my car and I can go, I can drive to Montreal if I want, no problem. And do you feel like this program is maybe giving this, that This to... program, they'll see what they can do and keep on doing these exercises of some kind and you feel to me you feel so much better every day I eat good I sleep good <laughs> what more do you want of life eh? <laughs> I'll keep doing it as long as I can my hip my knees hurt so what so I'm just gonna keep going as long as I can and that's all there is and I'm happy to be here I just want to say and Joe is so wonderful and respectful of the people he dances with and come to know how people need to be held and moved, um, especially when we're in the memory care floor. Where it was so sweet, Joe, um, there was a man who wanted to dance with Joe, one of the gentlemen in the, on the and, floor. And he comes up to me and he says, I'd like to dance with you for 14 minutes. I, I says, no problem. So I dance with a man. Lori says, how come you dance with him? I says, he asked me, what am I going to do? But this is what I say. If you have a good smile, good laugh, you have a good life, that's, what more do you need? So how long have you guys been married for? 63 years. Edna was a student nurse, and I was a student flyer in Winnipeg in 1953. That's where we met in good old Winnipeg. We just liked each other, wanted to be with each other, um, yeah. Has dancing always been a part of your relationship? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, uh, it has. I learned old-fashioned dancing when I was a teenager. We had my, back in England, we had a, a, a couple who taught old-fashioned dancing, and yeah, that's where I first started it. Um, Edna learned more by going around uh, as a teenager to the, in England, it was typical to go dancing, whether you had a partner or not, and you always found a partner anyway to dance with, so that's right, isn't it? Yes. We, and she was dancing I mean, more modern dancing than I was, so it, it took a while to sort of sort this out. We, <laughs> we would go to di different, different places all, all the time to, to dance. Yes. And the last thing you get would be if, if you finally finally decide to marry somebody. <laughs> and that was the last last thing you thought you came across. Yeah, I think that was fairly common though in England in those days. This is just after the war. We danced before we were married, and then there was a period there when we only danced at parties and that um, because we were married and we had small children and not too much money and stuff like that. But when we came to Canada in 1965, we started uh, taking dance lessons again. Uh, no, not again, we started taking dance lessons. And uh, we lived in Clarkson, which is now part of uh, Mississauga. And we had a wonderful Scottish couple there who, <clears throat> who we danced with for several years. We were so into dancing at that stage that we went on a cruise in the late 70s and we could uh, do a cha-cha-cha without repeating a movement in, for the whole three minutes. We had so many different movements and actually it was 
It was fun because we were the only people on the ship who knew how to do this. So nobody, everybody stepped back and watched us. <laughs> so that was great. I mean, Jessie gets her up there and bam, she's back as a kid. <laughs> You are writing some amazing history books. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I, I guess we should make sure that people know about Whitehurn Museum first, which is right beside the Hamilton City Hall. What made you decide to write about Whitehurn? Because of the history, the history of Whitehurn. The mother, Mary Baker McQuiston, was widowed with six children. Six children between the ages of 14 and two. And of course, no husband, no father. I think despite being widowed, she raised those five children. Six. Six, oh my. And from Ruby and Thomas, the subjects of your second book. Especially, there's this huge provincial and national and municipal legacy. You were 70 when you got your PhD. Yes. Yes. What made you decide to go back at that age? <laughs> I don't know. I think you never stopped. I never stopped. <laughs> um, Have you always had a love of learning then? Always. Always, which kept me going back to school, to university for my BA. MA and PhD and uh, and I stayed with it and I loved it. I've always loved learning. Yes, the reason I got involved with the dance is uh, because I danced. I used to go to the Sunday night dances at the various churches church halls in Hamilton. I, just, I love the music and I love the dancing. Lori and Rebecca um, came up with this pilot project and my mother-in-law, Marion, your buddy, is on a memory lane area and um, my mom is still at home and they, they both love dancing and have, are good at it. And so when this pilot project came up, um, we got to be kind of a test family because we were getting it from all, all sides and uh, it's been just a beautiful thing watching um, how it changes our relationship with the ladies. What, have, what differences, what changes have you seen? In the case of my mother-in-law, um, it's giving us a rare opportunity uh, with her dementia to see her um, inhabit her earlier, um, yes. earlier year, her, her fun self comes out. And so all the conversation is usually about illness and dementia and sadness. And I'd say like with the very first dancing um, uh, day, suddenly we had these other things to talk about and like, Grandma had a great afternoon. What, what, when was the last time we said that? And, uh, and you know, and then the stories start coming out. And, oh yeah, I remember, my mom used to really like such and such. And, and uh, the songs come up. And with you, it's like mom has this new group of friends that I don't have anything to do with. And, um, and uh, you know, new clothes and things, and it's a thing, and it's an adult thing, and it's a thing that people of my generation are not very good at. 
sex. That's true. And, and so we get this, this room full of this dancing and life comes into it and suddenly we're very subordinate. I realize that they, from Jesse and, and uh, so on, I mean, there's all these different types of three-step, four-step, waltzing and rumba and Latin and and they, they are, they are, they are, it puts them back where they belong, you know. One of the things that I observe for people who are involved in the program, the volunteers, the people, the residents themselves, but also the staff who come in and they observe the program is they're seeing their residents as, as um, in a different light. They're seeing them the way they probably were way back when, when they used to get up and dance and closing their eyes and just loving to move to the music. Um, even people in wheelchairs, people with walkers, you know, it's sort of like to me, I kind of use the analogy, people who stutter can sing. People who can't walk can still dance. So there's something really profound in that. The other thing is it's an opportunity, and for me too personally in my life, to be held, to be touched in a way that's respectful and caring and, and considerate. And um, so it allows these people who are only touched probably to get dressed, to get um, toileted, to be helped with meals, but really to be held and touched in a considerate way to, in dance I think it brings them back to a feeling of just, you know, it just humanizes the whole experience so much more. And the staff get to touch them in that way when they join in as well. So I think it's really profound for everyone who's involved. I know that everybody is so touched. There's, there's hardly a time when people are in there and the, often there's somebody who's moved to tears watching the program because they're so touched by these people who are typically in their wheelchairs or not talking, not animated, and all of a sudden they're getting up and they're, they're moving to the music and they're smiling and they're singing the songs because they remember the music. And there's just something very beautiful and connected for everyone that's there. Oh, I just love to be moving. It's better than working out. Tango, jive. What do you like about them? Oh, the nice kind of movement that goes in. I like something that's kind of fast. I, I don't dance the waltz good at all. <laughs> that's why waltz dance. stories of what they went through is very interesting and it, it's a joy. So it's really been a way for you guys to connect as a couple. Oh yes, sure has, absolutely. Um, and uh, 
What I'm delighted about uh, the dancing is just wonderful. I think it's a great, great program they have for uh, these uh, fine people to come and dance with us. It's been a day we really look forward to. Every uh, every weekend or Monday, I say to Edna, don't forget, tomorrow is Tuesday, it's dance day. <laughs> she forgets that it is, of course, but then when it comes around, she's quite delighted that it is. So we, um, yeah, we love it. I think the dancing, it's given us something else to talk about that's real and present and has happy memories. And quite a few of the stories maybe are coming out more as adult to adult about the Sunday nights. And, um, and just what a pleasure it was to be part of that post-war society. And, and things were hard, but the dancing was obviously really fun. Do you think you'd be dancing if it weren't for this program? Oh yeah, I'll still be dancing. Even when I go away on a holiday, I still dance. I go to the islands and I dance. And they look at me and they say, you swim like that and you dance? And I say, oh yeah, I have it. And this is what it's all about, having a great life. And how many days do you have? I had a lot so far, maybe I'll have a lot more. <laughs> but <laughs> I enjoy.